oh, I'm just setting up a second screen recorder because there was one time when I spent a whole hour creating a really awesome video. It didn't record. No, actually it recorded, but it couldn't process properly. No thanks to Loom. So anyway, second recorder being set up right now. Ta-da! Okay. All right. So hi, everyone. So for those of you who don't know me, I'm Miss Ho, your physics teacher. All right. So what I'm going to go through in this video is a general overview of how to draw a best fit line graph. All right. Uh, this is uh, especially for experiments, and I'm going to be using the pendulum experiment mainly as uh, the reference over here because uh, this is normally the first experiment in uh, Form 4 that the students do. And at least if you know how to do you know, draw a graph properly in this experiment, um, subsequent experiments I think will be a lot easier. So, okay, now when plotting a graph, Depending on what the question asks, like if the graph asks you graph pula apataka, if the question asks you to plot a graph of t squared, let me just get the power symbol because I am very fussy about this against L. Remember that the first. Um, variable here is the y on the y-axis and the second one's on the x-axis, which means that when you plot, this should be t squared and this should be l. All right, so I'm just going to go through a few um, key things you need to know for SBM. Okay, um, let me just, well, I'll leave this there so that you have, to have a reference. So this is your y, it's your x-axis, all right? So when plotting a graph, um, now remember that as physics students, there'll be a lot of graphs to learn. To Remember, as physics students, there's a lot of graphs to draw. So if you love physics, you need to love graphs. <laughs> All right? Okay, so some key things to remember when drawing graphs. Okay. Number one, size matters. Now, the typical advice uh, given to students is that um, the minimum graph size you should draw based on that uh, A4 size because we use A4 size, right? A4 size should be minimum 50%. I don't want you to think of minimum 50%, minimum 50% because if you think that, you know what's going to happen? You're going to draw and aim for 50%. Now, it's minimum 50%, but the bigger it is, the more accurate your graph would be. So that's why it's better if you could draw a graph that is as big as possible. As big as possible. Fill up the entire graph paper if possible. Okay. So then when you so that when you start planning your scale, then you can plan the scale based on the size that you want to draw. So remember that when you um, draw out your labels, uh, labels block, when you want to label your axes, so axes is the plural for axis, right? Y axis, x axis, and plural axes, right? So the axis you must remember to label with the symbol and unit. So not only t squared and l, you also need to label the unit. So you can either use a slash or bracket. So I'm just going to use a bracket, but there's nothing wrong with using a slash. Okay. Either one, not both, not slash and bracket. Okay. Now the scale. Let me make this a bit like this. Okay. Now the scale you use. Please make sure that the scale is regular. Try to use uh, numbers that are easy to work with. You know, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, um, 5, 10, 15, 20, or variants of that 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. Avoid using numbers where it's really hard to, you know, to divide, like odd numbers, like 3, you know, 3, 6, 9, 12, or 7, 14, 21. Try to avoid those kind of numbers because they're really hard to work with when it comes to scale. So use numbers that are easy to plot out. So like the 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 5, 10, all works all. Like I said, variants of that. Okay. Scale regular. Oh, my England. Uh, use, I mean, scale, use regular numbers. Okay. And while we're on the topic of scale, when you label the scale, the numbers on the axes for SPM you must start from zero. Now, um, 
other subjects uh, like maths um, or even if you look at physics, IGCSE, it is possible to have the skill that does not start from zero. That means like, let me move my face out of the way. Like right at the bottom here, you can start maybe oh, 50, 60, 70. It's possible, but not for SPM. For SPM, you must start from zero. And there's a reason for this. Um, it's everything to do with um, how we want to determine the relationship of the graph, which I will cover briefly in the next slide. But just remember for now, you must start from zero. And related to that concept of the relationship, no hanging graphs. Ooh, they made me capitalize. Very important. No hanging graphs. Very important. What's a hanging graph? A hanging graph is a graph where after you've plotted, you just leave it like that in the middle of nowhere. Ooh, floating. Ooh, hanging lah. Huh? Right? So we don't want graphs like this. You have to extend this so that either it touches the y-axis, x-axis, or it goes to origin. Just do an extension. So these two, these two, the last two notes, last two points, I mean, scale, where we must start from zero, and no hanging graphs, is, has everything to do with how we would state the relationship of the graph. Okay? So this one cannot, 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 cannot. Okay? Just going to wrap this off because... So these are the important things to take note about the graph, and I'm going to make this bigger, okay? Important. Let me put it in red color to show how important it is. Okay. All right. So, um about the relationship of the graph so that I can explain why no hanging graphs and all that. Because in SPM, you need to be able to state the relationship of the graph. And uh, generally, in physics SPM, we like linear graphs. We don't like curved graphs, curved graphs because curved graphs are difficult to plot. So we prefer linear graphs. But when we say linear graphs, it could be a linear graph that goes through origin, or it could be a linear graph that starts from the y-axis, or it can be a linear graph that starts from the x-axis. Now, we also have decreasing linear graphs, but uh, that's not something I want to cover right now because these three graphs are usually the, the points of contention uh, when it comes to relationships. So this kind of graph is directly proportional. Remember, you can't say directly proportional. You have to say y is directly proportional, right? But I'm just going to make it... Uh, I'm just going to put short form here because we uh, want to get to plotting the graph, right? So directly proportional graphs, whereas these two, they are not directly proportional because they don't go through origin. So these are actually increasing linearly graphs. That means y increases linearly with x. Okay, for these two. So if you, um, if you don't start from zero, for example, like this, if you have a graph where the number like this, you know, it starts from 50, 60, 70, and so on and so forth. And this number starts from, let's say, 20, 30, 40. And then you have a graph that goes like this. I mean, is it a um, directly proportional or increasing linearly graph? Now, those of you who are good in math, you can probably figure it out. But the mere mortals will look and be like, it looks like a directly proportional graph. But it's not. It doesn't go through origin. So it's a little bit confusing. So that's why we don't want our graph to start from numbers that are not zero. We want to start the graph from zero. Likewise, hanging graphs. If you have a hanging graph like this, is this an increasing linearly graph or a directly proportional graph? You can't tell, right? The only way to tell is by extending the line. That's why we don't want uh, hanging graphs. You don't, so that's why don't draw it like this. If you want to draw a graph, graph. If you want to draw a graph, extend it all the way so that it at least touches the y-axis or the origin or x-axis. Like in this case, yeah, you can see. Okay, it is an increasing linearly graph. So the only way to tell is by extending the line. So remember, start from zero and no hanging graphs so that we can determine the relationship easily and clearly. Let's talk about how to plot a best fit line because uh, this is something that a lot of students um, often get confused about. Now, there are many ways to um, think about this and I'll just go through some of the common ways that teachers have uh, explained, but then I'm going to go through my way, which I feel that um, makes the most sense to a lot of students. So some, some students learn that, oh, you know, you must, go through, um, you must go through the most points in a straight line. So sometimes you have a situation like this 
and then they learn that, oh, okay, uh, these three points are in a straight line, uh, so we go through these three points. This is not a best fit. Okay, obviously, that's not, but let's say it's something like this. This is still not a best fit. Why? Because you've ignored these two points. You're saying these two points are not important. This kind of graph um, is biased to the top, so that's not correct. A best fit line needs to go between all these points because you have to remember that Okay, we only have five points um, for our, our practical, but in reality, sometimes we have a lot more points. So the purpose of plotting a graph is to find the trend. And the reality is when we do experiments, our data will never show perfect lines. So our data will be scattered. But when it's scattered, they kind of show a trend. So let's say, for example, if I'm just randomly, like say, for example, we've done a whole bunch of experiments and these are our data points. So sometimes we have outliers, Outliers means um, the, the points that maybe too much error until it's all the way, you know, like not part of the graph. Oops. Okay. But otherwise, they tend to follow a trend. So when you look overall, take a step back and look, oh, straight line. So remember that in maths, you learn the concept of averages. And the average value kind of represents the entire data set. So in order to get an average, it means it's somewhere in the middle, you want to draw a line that goes between all these points. So whether you have five points or 20 or 100 or 1,000 points, your line should still go in between all these points. So the idea of just going through just three points that are in a straight line would not be correct um, in some cases like this. And then um, another, another thing that some students also learn is that, oh, uh, instead of, of, of you know, going through three points, <laughs> let me just rub this off, okay? <laughs> this new. Um, then they learn, okay, Another thing you must take into account as well is that, oh, it has to, you have to put it in such a way that, you know, the, you have an equal number of points above and below the line, and then they must be equal distance from um, each other. I mean, not each other, sorry, from the, the line. And then you're like, oh my gosh, teacher, how do I figure out, you know, where is the, where is the, the line, you know, that, so that it goes in between properly. Okay, so that one's true, but how do we figure it out? So I find the easiest way is to do this. Now, you don't have to do this, uh, don't have to, color this like I'm going to show you, but here's the idea. You see these points, I'm coloring, right? You think of this as an area. This area represents where the data is. And what you want to do is you want to draw a line that divides this area into two. So it's kind of something, whoops, sorry, something like this. When you divide the area into two, then what happens is it means it's actually going in between. So you will find that, okay, overall, the average distance of the, the points from the line will be more or less like it averages out to be the same on both sides. And you have kind of equal number of points above and below. So you can even see in here, this blue line I've drawn is actually cutting the area where all these points are. So if I were to color to just represent uh, visually the area of where the points are, you're kind of actually dividing that area into two. Um, that's I that I find that to be the easiest concept to understand how to draw the best fit line, because the line should be the average of all the points in the data set. So, best fit line, um, you of course would want to try to go through as many points as possible, but it has to be in such a way that it divides um, the graph points so that you have almost equal, sometimes not exactly equal, could be like 2, 2, that's equal, or could be 1, 2, or, you know, 2, 1, you know, but never 3, 1, that's already unbalanced. So you want to kind of have the an equal number of points on both sides and the average distance of the points from that line to be uh, more or less the same. So I find this to be the best uh, concept to understand. So again, how you do this is you kind of visualize the area where the points are scattered and you want to divide the area into two. Oh, another thing I forgot to mention, remember that when you plot the line, it's not connect the dots. So you don't tick, 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 tick. it's not connect the dots, all right? A best fit line is looking at the trend and then you draw a line based on what the trend shows. So if it shows a straight line, you draw a straight line. If it's a curve, you draw a curve, right? So in physics SPM, it tends to be linear graphs, but be aware of other graphs in the future where it could be curves. So I hope you found this video helpful and educational. Oh yes, don't forget the plug. Don't forget to subscribe. Click like and subscribe. Okay, that's all for now.